Let's just take these off. It's fine. I'm looking a little pink. Tadaima. It's been a while, so I just wanted to have an honest conversation about my language goals that I talked about at the beginning of this year. <laughs> Originally, I said I wanted to take N1 at the end of the year, so December. Well, halfway through August, the registration is already closed, and I was not expecting that. I should have kept a closer eye on it, but you know, whatever. It is what it is. I was not expecting it to be done that early. Um, but let's be very honest <laughs> about my studying. Um, it is a little embarrassing, but at the beginning of the year, I said I wanted to take all of my N3, all of my N2, and all my N1 books. I wanted to review N3 and review N2 and then do all the N1 books leading up to JOPT. Well, that did not happen. <laughs> so I, I was doing pretty well. I was studying very consistently, but just, yeah, it, it wasn't good. So there's a lot of things I could blame it on. So I could say, oh, well, you know, I went home for Christmas. And then when I got back home, I was very, you know, like I was in a very sad, not super great place. I miss my family. Like I said in you know my most recent video, my husband was sick with COVID, so he came home a week later than expected, and then I was extra sad because I was alone, and that kind of that kind of feeling just continued for way too long, maybe like two to three months. I was not uh, very happy, and then my husband's family came and visited, and we went to London and Paris and. Had a wonderful time and they were here for about a month a little over a month and so that was happening so i wasn't studying often but i was using japanese all the time i i could use that as an excuse i could use all these things as an excuse but at the end of the day i just didn't make the time and i spent way too much time on my phone when i could have been doing something else and then you know I'm working part-time, which has been really good, so that also means that I'm losing some time in the day that I could use for studying. But, you know, at the end of the day, I didn't make the time. I let other things distract me. So, you know, we'll just try again later. But that doesn't mean that I have not been using Japanese. Um, actually, since moving to Germany, I use Japanese more in my daily life than I did in Japan. So when I was in Japan, obviously when I was at work or if I was out and about, like I had to use Japanese, like that was every single day. But when I came home, I didn't want to use Japanese. I've been using it all day. I don't want to do that. So I'd only speak English at home. <laughs> and so now that we're in Germany, I speak a lot more Japanese because <laughs> I don't want to forget it at all. Um, so that that's that. Um, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this in a minute because it wraps into the conversation I want to have. Um, but so, let's talk about what I have been doing recently. Actually, no, let's not do that because I'm going to tell you what this conversation is about. So, a while ago, I got a message from somebody on Instagram who has been following me for a while, followed my old account, and is following me again on my new one. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for following. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Um, but this is the message that she sent to me. I want some advice from you about your studies. Like you, I have the N2 certificate, but I'm completely lost about my studies. I live in Japan and I work with Japanese people, but my Japanese language skills are far away from perfection. I know that perfection doesn't exist. I feel like my brain is too lazy to study Japanese since I can handle work with my actual skill, but it's hard. Lately, I feel so demotivated to study. I don't know what to prioritize, what I have to study, or if I have to do a review of grammar or practice more conversation or study kanji writing. And recently I found myself not studying at all and that worries me. When I see your account, I get inspired. I think you are the most realistic and honest studygram account I've seen. That's why I'm asking you for some advice about what I can do to handle this. 
What do you think I should do to get more motivated about my studies? Or what tips can you give me about Japanese studying? I'm sorry for these difficult questions. I don't know anyone who can understand my situation better. I hope you can help me. So for starters, thank you for such a really sweet message. Uh, I'm really glad that I'm able to be some sort of inspiration or help. But at the core, and I, I replied to this person a while ago, but at the core, don't compare yourself to people. That's number one. And I'm still working on this. I compare myself quite a bit. Um, I always feel like I could be doing more. I could be doing better. I could do this. I could do that. I could read more. I could watch more. I could use my time efficiently. I could study efficiently. But just, you know, it's, it's not good to compare yourself to people. So, like I said, you know, I've kind of hit a rut and I've been dealing with that recently. So my current advice, and this is what is working for me. This may not work for you, but this is helping me. Take a break. <laughs> if you are feeling so stressed out and so worried about studying, take a break. Um, if you are at a beginner level, obviously you need to do a little bit of something every day to keep it going so you don't lose all your progress. But when you're at an advanced level, take a break. And I mean, take a break from studying, not, not from the language itself, but just from studying. For example, I did not start learning Japanese because of anime. I didn't really start getting into any anime until this year. There are a few that I watched growing up and I was never super, super into them, but you know, it just, the reason why I learned Japanese is a story for another day. So we can talk about that later. So I decided, you know what? I'm just not gonna focus on studying for a while. I'm not gonna force myself to study. And so what I've been doing instead is, my husband is very into Jojo's Bizarre Adventure right now. <laughs> and so I've been watching that with him. And if there's a word that comes up, and if I don't know that word, I don't understand the rest of the sentence or the rest of the scene, I will ask him. But for the most part, I just leave the subtitles on. And I mean the Japanese subtitles, not the English subtitles. And I try to learn by context or understand by context. It just, I don't want to pull myself out of the experience of watching. I want to just watch. If you know Leafling Learns on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, she is fantastic. Julianne is fantastic. Um, she, every other month, has a thing called Mini Immersion, and it's a big online event basically where everybody joins on the discord server and they talk about the languages that they're learning and it's not just japanese they have many different servers for different languages but they'll watch movies together they'll watch shows together they'll stream games together they share books they have book clubs so if you're looking for information for that and opportunities for doing immersion practice as a group check out leafling learns now if you want advice for a book club Haru no Hanashi and Dokugaku, they run a book club together. They're both fantastic and they are some of the most motivated, hardworking accounts that I know. Um, I, <laughs> I'm guilty of comparing myself to them sometimes, but like I said, don't compare yourself. <laughs> don't compare yourself. <laughs> I'm still working on it and it's difficult, but don't compare yourself. So those are some options for some online um, online groups for you. Enjoying the language that you're learning, especially at an advanced level. Just take a break from studying, ignore hardcore studying, or if you really need to focus on studying or you really want to focus on studying, choose one thing. That is helping me right now. And we went to France a couple months ago. I picked up this book. Now, if you were just reviewing, it's great. It's one of those just review books with the red sheet. But if you're using it to sit down and properly study kanji, this book will not be enough. You will need to supplement it. So for me, I'm for the first time learning kanji through a Japanese kanji dictionary online. So I'm learning about kotowaza, which is idioms, um, the meanings, the readings, um, and then example uh, words or like I said, idioms. And that's been really helpful because I'm learning not just the character, but I'm learning culturally and like language-wise what these are meaning. And that's really been helpful for me. Choose one thing. If you want to choose kanji if you're doing Japanese,
focus only on that for a while. If you want to focus on grammar, focus only on that for a while. If you want to focus on vocabulary, focus on only that for a while. If you only want to do listening or you want to do reading, focus on only that for a bit. Now, like I said, when I'm watching anime with my husband, I'm not looking everything up. I'm just going. So I've been applying that to reading as well. So I am currently reading this. I do not remember how to read this at all. It says the English name is The Solitary Castle in the Mirror. I do not take every few minutes to look up every single word that I come across. If I did that, I would never finish this book. And I'm on page 88 or 89. Just, if you're gonna sit there and read and you are at an advanced level, try to use the context. If you aren't sure what it means and you don't understand anything else because you don't know what that word or two words means, look it up then. If not, just try to enjoy it. Like I said, Leafling Learns Mini Immersion, just immerse yourself. So I've been doing this. This does not have any hiragana, so that makes it a little more difficult and frustrating, but you know, it's fine. Um, but at night, I've been reading Sailor Moon. <laughs> And this, of course, has hoodie on, and that has been helpful for me. And that's a, you know, it's cute and it's light, and I'm enjoying it. So I'm just trying to find a way to add language more into my daily life, and especially with Japanese, it's easier for me to do because I, I have so many books over there on my bookshelf that I need to read through. And I have my husband, and I have my Kindle, and I have like everything that I see, you know, online and on Instagram, and everybody sharing everything, and it's lovely and wonderful. But I. I keep messing with my phone and that is not good and that is not helpful I need to put my phone down. <laughs> so I have started putting my phone on the opposite side of the bedroom at night and it stays there. I, I don't touch my phone at night. I try not to touch my phone at night and then I take that time that I would have been, you know, just scrolling and I try to read something. I'm trying to add things in where I can. Now for German, if you have any advice for ways to make studying German fun, please let me know because I'm struggling. <laughs> this is a textbook that I'm using. It's a DAF Compact Neu. It's It's got a lot of information and this is good because it has A1 through B1, so I don't have to have multiple textbooks. It's just this one. But my complaint is the entire thing is in German. There's nothing in English. There's no explanations in English, like nothing to help you out. So if you do not look up every single word, and if you do not look up grammar points or like German sentence structure, you're going to struggle with it. And I'm, I'm struggling with this. So when I'm looking in here, like I go to the end of the chapter where it has like everything like brought together, like the entire grammar and vocabulary consolidated at the end of the chapter. It's very stressful because there's so many words and I, I absolutely hate flashcards. I've tried doing flashcards ever since I was a little kid. I do not like them. I cannot stand them. They make me crazy. I try, I give up. I I give up because I can't focus. They're too boring to me. Um, actually, if you watch this video from Bunsuke, he talks about how he learned Japanese and we both have a very shared, um, not dislike or disdain, but we, we don't care for Anki, <laughs> just because I feel like it's sacrilege to say that because in the language learning community, everybody talks about Anki, how to do this, Anki deck, do this, do that. I, I can't, can't do it, I can't do it. He doesn't like it either. We've complained about it a lot when we chat. Um, so if you have any good advice for memorizing vocabulary without having to do flashcards all the time, that would be very, very helpful. Any advice you have is lovely, especially if it has to deal with German. <laughs> in, in other ways for practicing, I've started doing things differently on my Instagram. Um, so if you followed my old Instagram, you saw how I did things. I would just kind of talk about whatever studying I did, or I would, you know, I would just share what I was doing. So on Monday, I post a reel in English talking about whatever I did that weekend. Then 
on Wednesday, I post that same thing, but it's in Japanese. And then on Friday, I do it in my absolutely horrible German. <laughs> and so that's been giving me extra speaking practice. So the English, if you want to use it for English listening practice, okay. Japanese, Japanese listening practice, okay. German, that one's mainly for me just because I am so bad at it, German. Then on Tuesday and Thursday, I just tend to post a time lapse of me studying and that's about it. At the core of my advice to this person and my advice to you as someone who is, I guess you could say a very lazy language learner, <laughs> a very lang lazy language learner is if you are at an advanced level with your language and you are forcing yourself to study and it's not helping and you can't force yourself to study, you're, you just keep hitting a wall, take a break and enjoy the language, enjoy what you're doing, enjoy being able to do the things you can do now recognize that and when you're ready make yourself a study schedule again or enjoy the language and then choose one thing to focus on and you can change that focus every week or you can just focus on that one thing for a while up to you also don't compare yourself to people i know it's very easy to do but it's not helpful i'm still working on that myself thank you for watching until the very end um it, it was nice to just kind of speak for a while i hope whatever i said had some sort of relatability for you and maybe helped you kind of reevaluate maybe the way that you were doing things um because even just talking about it for me was helpful for me y'all have a lovely day thanks again for watching and i will chat with y'all later